I'm going to talk about a real life example on the failure of this constant velocity joint, or for short, a CV axle or half shaft, as it's also known. You'll also get a good understanding on how this CV axle is composed. So the right side is the inner CV joint that connects to the differential or transmission, and you'll see the splines, and it's a little shorter than the other side. The other CV joint area where you can see the splines are a little longer and there is some threading which is where the axle nut spins on. Also, the splines on the left side is what the wheel hub goes on or connects to which ultimately allows the wheel to spin. To the right of this is a tone ring, also known as a reluctor ring or ABS ring. Simply put, this ring sends information to a sensor which determines how fast each wheel is going. I actually made a separate video on carefully removing and cleaning the tone ring and reusing it on a different CV axle. I'll put that video in the description to watch later. Anyway, next comes a big clamp band which secures the rubber boot, which is full of grease, and then another smaller band clamp on the other end keeps the rubber boot locked in place. Now, as you can see, this is split open. This piece is actually considered the outer CV axle assembly, which consists of grease, approximately six balls, and two other pieces called a cage and a bearing race. A cage and a race holds the balls in place and allows it to move like it's on a fixed track. Now, it's pretty hard to see with all the grease, but this assembly is what allows the CV joint to rotate. Now, I'll grab the part that actually failed and snapped off from here. So, as you can see, there is some grease in here as well. And you can see the top of the splines right here. So, a piece of the spline broke off. Anyway, so you can better understand the problem, look at the end of the inner side of the CV axle. There is a ring on here that keeps the inner side CV axle connected to the differential. So don't ever take those rings off when replacing or reinstalling onto your vehicle. Okay, now on the left side, or outer CV axle area, that clip is located inside of the rubber boot. By the way, that clip is also called the retainer ring, snap ring, C-clip, sir clip, or compression ring. So anyway, that clip sits inside a groove, just like the other side. And if it's not there, then the assembly can come right off, destroying the CV axle and all the components. And of course, the vehicle will be inoperable. Here's the little piece of the spline that broke off. And I found a piece of the clip in the rubber boot grease. And that goes right there. Like that. See that? The clip goes in this groove and this connects to the bearing racing cage. This piece of the spline broke and the clip went flying in a few pieces in the grease. So here's how the broken clip looks on here in this groove. And again, once this broke, then the remains of the shaft started spinning, making a loud clanking sound and completely split or ripped off the rubber boot. Let me see if I can find that other piece of the broken clip. Yep, that's the other piece. Right there, I can get it. Try to get that piece out. Wow. I'll try to piece it back together. Huh, look at that. Mm-hmm. It's amazing to think how something this small can just break and cause a potentially severe accident. Well, enough this broken clip. Anyway, this piece that snapped off the CV axle most likely failed due to either too much torque going to the wheels, or it could be the clip somehow got loose due to the horrendous and pothole-ridden roads in this country. Or it could be from poor craftsmanship from the maker of this CV axle, or it could be a combination of everything I just mentioned. I'll never know for sure. Now, this CV axle was on either a Chrysler 300, Dodge Charger, or Dodge Magnum. In general, those cars have horrible suspension, and those CV axles tend to fail. In fact, when one fails, they usually will all fail within a short amount of time. 
what Fiat, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Stellantis, whatever you want to call them, they should have either made a better design or thicker bolt-in style CV axles. In fact, all car manufacturers should put in really good CV axles. But at the end of the day, if they can give you something thinner with a higher chance of failure, then they will save on material costs and of course help their fellow stealerships in getting you to buy another one or upgrade to a more durable design. Hopefully this changes and they make better designs in time or figure out a way to allow better software to prevent too much torque going to the wheels in this failure case of the CV axle. Something only Tesla or a small few has the capability to do currently. With that being said, let me and others know of your thoughts or experience with these CV axles in the comments section. I have a bunch of other helpful videos on this channel like temporarily repairing a CV boot, how to easily remove a CV axle, and so many other kinds of helpful videos. Just check them out. If you haven't already, please tap the like button and subscribe for more cool videos like this. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day or night. I better work on installing a CV axle now. After all, I'm running out of excuses for being late to work. Later.